Yeah. Talking to my mirror like I love you so much. Curving on my critics like I heard you so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. Tally all the fucks I ever gave on my head. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. They ain't wanna help me, that's what made me a boss. Alright, what's up y'all? Rob here, Square Wheels. You asked and I delivered. So this past weekend, I completed the install of the Lighting Trends LED Flow Series Day Running Lights on my Infinity Q50. I documented everything. I'm gonna walk you through the process I went through to opening the headlights up. You can probably follow these steps if you want to paint the interior parts of your headlights like I did. And then obviously the whole installation of the Day Running Lights Kit and the wiring uh, in the car. I covered everything end to end. I'm gonna add chapters in the bottom, so if you feel free to jump ahead at any step. Also, I just kinda made this thing work, right? So there's no real good documentation, no real steps to follow. So if you know any better than I did at any of these steps, please feel free to let the community know down in the comments. Also, this isn't my last headlight project. This is actually just my second headlight project. So I'm planning on going back in, maybe experimenting with a different headlight controller, maybe configuring some startup animations, um, some sequentials. Anything that you guys are interested in, let me know down in the comments and I'll feature them in a future video. Thanks for checking me out. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. Thanks. So as I mentioned before, this isn't the first time that I opened up a set of headlights. So on this Q50, uh, a few months ago, I opened them up, I painted all the internals, and I frosted the crest and brows. Uh, the whole reason that I'm doing this now is because after doing that, they weren't as bright as I wanted them to be. So with this install, I got some nice bright white LEDs, and then I also have the added bonus of all these animations. Now, honestly, I probably won't be using these animations uh, very frequently, but it's a cool, you know, little added bonus that that I appreciate. All right, to get this project started, you're going to need to take the bumper off. So you'll be able to see as I go through this process, I'm kind of strategically working my way around the headlight, just removing things that I need to remove in order to get it free. First step is jacking up the vehicle so you can get to the bolts underneath the bumper. Alright, once I got the vehicle secured, I'm popping the hood and you can see I'm starting to work around the trim directly around the headlights, removing any bolts that I see with a 10 millimeter uh, socket. Uh, a lot of these uh, plastic trims are just held in with these uh, little rivets and you're probably really familiar with this if you've uh, removed your bumper or changed your filters before. This trim here pops up, all you need to do is uh, pull it kind of straight up, just be sh careful not to break anything, but pretty durable. And then under here, you'll see one bolt that uh, holds your headlight in position. Again, just a 10 millimeter socket here. All right, here's another reason why we lifted the vehicle. Uh, what we're gonna wanna do is get behind this plastic fender liner here, and what you'll find is there's another 10 millimeter bolt that is uh, holding the bumper to the car. Just remove that carefully, make sure you save that clip, otherwise you're gonna look like all the Nissan and Infiniti guys that have removed their bumpers before, that every time they walk by their car, they have to <laughs> hit it with their knee to get it back in place. All right, once you got those bolts and clips removed, you should be able to uh, start prying your bumper away. If you ever feel any resistance, make sure you stop. There's probably another screw that you need to find to uh, free it up. Uh, don't forget the bumper bolts underneath uh, the bumper. Yours may look a little different than mine because I've got a toll booth Willie um, 
under tray here, aluminum under tray, but you're gonna wanna remove all these bolts that hold the bumper to your under tray. Um, and once you've done this, you should start feeling the bumper getting pretty loose. Major key alert. Um, if you're feeling the bumper get loose, you may want to get a friend to help support. Don't be an idiot like I did and drop your bumper. If anything, put some towels down so you're not scratching your paint. Once your bumper's free, uh, disconnect the, any wiring that you've got to your fog lights or to your turn signals. Uh, I'm sure everybody's got them. They're just little clips. You can use your screwdriver to push the pin down and remove them. And once that wiring is disconnected, uh, you should be free to uh, carry your bumper away somewhere safe. All right, with the bumper gone, you're just gonna wanna keep up the process and keep removing uh, these 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts until the headlight is free. You'll find them kind of strategically placed all around the headlight and the more you remove, the more the headlight will start getting loose and you'll be able to start pulling it out. Alright, milestone here. Uh, there's only one real harness that holds the headlight and all the wiring for it. And there's one little tab that holds that harness on. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It really helps to pull the headlight out, flip it upside down, see that tab, and push that tab down with a screwdriver, and then the headlight uh, should be free to come out. It's not tricking if she's your so no, I'm spending yeah. If I got it, then she got it, tell her spend it, yeah. All right, now that we got the headlights out of the car and into our work area, we can start getting them ready to bake and uh, remove the lenses so we can get to those internal components. Now there's just two things we need to be sure of before we put these things in the oven. One is make sure that there's no wires or any multiple components that are exposed. And two is make sure that we get all the screws uh, out of the headlights that will hold the lens on because as soon as it comes out of the oven what we're going to want to do is separate the lens from the rest of the body so we can you know pull it away and get to those insides This is an important step here. Before you turn the oven on, make sure you test fit your headlight in the oven and make sure that nothing plastic and nothing visible is touching any metal components. I learned this the hard way when I baked my G37 headlights. I ended up melting a part of the lens and it didn't look very good. So important step, make sure you test fit uh, these headlights in your oven before you turn the oven on and set any heat on it. All right. Once you test fit, you got your positioning, you can take it out and uh, set your oven. Set it to 275 degrees and uh, just sit tight while it gets up to temperature. Uh, once it does, you set your timer for seven minutes and you go ahead and pop the headlight in the oven the exact same way that you test fitted it. And again, make sure that nothing plastic is touching anything metal. While it's in the oven, you wanna pop on some gloves because it's gonna be hot when it gets out. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you've got like a screwdriver or some kind of pry tool handy. Um, this is gonna help you kind of separate the lens away from the body of the headlight. Uh, and we'll talk you through that as soon as this thing comes out of the oven. All right. 
right, sitting tight and waiting. And that's looking good enough. Let's get it out. All right, what you're gonna wanna do is be as quick as possible. You wanna maintain this heat and keep that sealant nice and gooey. So it'll be really easy to separate the lens from the body. So I'm going right to my workshop, putting this down on a table and setting right to kind of prying it apart. Now when you're prying, just make sure that you're not applying too much pressure in one spot. You don't want to bend uh, the plastic enclosure. So I use kind of the broad side of the screwdriver and just made it real kind of generalized pressure as I'm prying apart. And I kind of just focused on the corners. Anything that was gonna make it easier for me to kind of hand pry these uh, lenses apart. I'm starting to make some progress here so you can see it's really just pulling you know to break that that seal and once you you know break the seal just keep on pulling as long as you got all those screws out it'll be relatively easy you just got to do cons consistent pressure on it and uh yep, just get to this other side and good god that is so satisfying once that gets out so our next step here is disconnecting all the uh oe connectors to these components uh, you don't really need to remember uh, which one goes where because there's only one way for them to go back together. Um, all these are going to have to go back um, once you uh, close the headlight up um, because not, none of this gets affected by your install. Now, here's another major key. So to pull the interior headlight components away from its enclosure, there's these two bolts right here. And the key right here is to loosen them a little bit at a time and alternate until those two screws are completely loose. You can't do it all one screw at a time or else you're going to be fighting against yourself and it's going to be really difficult to get them separated. So just keep alternating uh, a couple turns on each of them and that should um, remove it. And then there's going to be one more bolt kind of opposite these two the key to that one is there's two tiny little tabs on it that are preventing it from coming through um, that sleeve if you depress those two tabs are on opposite sides of each other then the interior part of this headlight enclosure comes right out from this point once we're we've got this uh, the headlight assembly out we're just you know, removing screws again. So you remove the four screws on the back of the headlight enclosure, and then there's a couple other screws that keep this metal heat sink in place. You just keep removing screws and this thing will start falling apart. Just remember how you did it because you're gonna have to do everything backwards to put it back together. This is pretty much it. So once you've hit this point, you've got everything apart that you need to in order to paint your interior assembly and also frost your crested brows. If you're looking for information on that, uh, shoot me a message. It's really simple. All you're doing is, you know, scratching it down and uh, painting it or frosting it. Um, so there's not really too much to it. The hardest part is really just pulling everything out and getting it assembled. Be patient if you're painting. That's one more major key. All right, so let's talk this retrofit kit. So this is the Lighting Trends uh, kit. Um, uh, I'll link it in the description. 
But one thing that I found frustrating about this whole process was that even on the website, it didn't let you know exactly what you were going to get. It didn't let you know how many components were involved. It didn't let you know how you're supposed to run power or, you know, what, what actual elements are required to make up a complete kit. So as I unboxed this, like it was completely a learning experience. I didn't know what went where, I didn't know what plugged into what, but I'm gonna walk you through it today. So at least there's some stake in the ground that you, know, you guys can refer to uh, if you guys wanna do this yourself. So one thing I did know was that I was gonna wanna test all this stuff before I actually installed it in the car just to make sure it works. So what I did was got this power unit off of Amazon. And basically what this does is converts, you know, wall power to DC power and it puts out 12 volts of electricity just like your car would. So this allows you to test all the LEDs, everything that comes in the kit just to make sure that it works and understand how everything works together too. Okay, so let's dig in. I've hooked up power from my Amazon using to the wiring from the lighting trends as a positive and a ground. And the positive is a fused cable, which is really nice. And this goes to the first unit, which is the power supply. You can tell it's a power supply because it's got a heat sink on it. From the power supply, you provide power to what's called the control unit. And this is the lighting trends flow series control unit. And it's got four outputs on it. Those four outputs go to any of those LED components you get, like the eyebrows or the crescent or, you know, halos, whatever you want to do, you can hook up to these four channels. And this actually included splitters, so you can actually have multiple components on a single channel, which is cool. Now, the last thing that comes off the power unit is a, uh, a line for the Bluetooth controller. Uh, and I thought this was really cool because I've, I've got a couple of these Bluetooth controllers. It's the SP110E. Uh, it's usually used for like uh, home automation, you know, your your counter lights and all, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, it's a cheap $10 Bluetooth unit. But basically, this is what you're going to use to control your lights uh, from, you know, the app on your phone or your, you know, whatever device. So the... Bluetooth unit talks to the control unit and tells all the LEDs what's to, what to do. That's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, it's not it's not uh, brain surgery. It's not rocket science. It's just these units that need to uh, play together basically to make your uh, headlights work. So where it gets interesting is kind of plugging all this stuff in and making sure that uh, it's secure in your car. All right, so now's the exciting part. So what I'm doing here is fitting the eyebrow on the top of uh, the driver's side headlight. Now this looks like a standard 18 inch strip of LED. Uh, all the LEDs are placed pretty closely together uh, on the lighting trends kit, which is really nice. It also comes with this uh, white diffusion um, which really helps to hide each of the individual LEDs and make it look like a nice solid bar of light. Really cool. So I can see that the light goes all the way across and I'm gonna need to find some way for it to sit flush but still have the power wire uh, come through. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole in this um, just wide enough that I'll be able to run the actual wire through and then have the rest of the, you know, factory eyebrow sit on top of this, um, and have a nice clean look. I'm not really worried about drilling anything, uh, because no matter what, I put the factory eyebrow right back on top of this. So even if I take everything out and go all the way back to stock, this eyebrow will hide everything. It'll look all the same to anybody that's even looking really closely at the headlight. Now I know I could have used the Dremel for this, but honestly I couldn't find the tools and uh, the drill just worked just fine.
So now that I got this position on the wire side, I'm stripping off the uh, backing from that 3M adhesive, and I'm just gonna stick it in place right at the eyebrow spot on the headlight. So it's sitting down real nice, which is good. Or so we'd think. So we see me here doing a bit more fiddling on the uh, inside of the headlight uh, because of that oh so distinctive uh, dip down. So what we see here is that the LED strip is actually pretty rigid, so it's really hard to maneuver it around this corner. Now, I talked to some people after I did this, and it turns out that they didn't even bother, you know, making it go down the curve. So, you know, consider that when you're going through this. What I ended up doing was um, cutting some of that diffuser to make it a bit more flexible, and then pushing, you know, it down and using adhesive to make it stick and go through the curve. This is one of those moments though, where I'm really looking for help because I wouldn't mind going back in here. This didn't come out perfect. Um, so if anyone's got any pointers on this, please hit me down in the comments. As you can see, I got this all fitted and back together, but the factory eyebrow doesn't click back into place. So if you're looking really closely, you can see that it's not you know, a perfect install. Anyway, if you're close enough to see my flaws, you're too close, man. So I tried things a little differently with the passenger uh, eyebrow. So I could tell that I was having fitment issues because the diffusion was so thick that it really made it hard for the OE eyebrow to fit on top of it. So what I did right off the bat was I decided to make it not as fat. So I carefully got a razor and I actually cut the LED strip out of the diffusion panel just to see how it would look. Um, you know, cause I already frosted my eyebrows. I figured I might get uh, a nice solid looking line anyway. So I carefully cut the diffusion off of the LED strip and pulled the LED strip completely out of it and tried to fit it just with no diffusion at all. It actually turned out fitting pretty nicely and sitting pretty nicely, but I could still kind of see that uh, there were some dots. You can't really see it in the video, but you can see the individual LEDs just a little bit more than you could with the full diffusion on there. So uh, I decided to just make both my headlights match and put the diffusion uh, back on. I didn't put the entire thing on, so I still use the LED strip and then I just use adhesive to stick it to the headlight itself. And then I took the top layer of diffusion and just put it uh, on top with some super glue, a couple spots along the entire line, and that made it sit pretty nice. So this way I was able to get the LEDs in place, get the diffusion in place, and still put the factory eyebrow on top, and my fitment was a lot better on the uh, passenger side. All right, next up, we've got the crescent. I already showed you how to take uh, the crescent out of the headlight enclosure. Uh, so this is just the last step. It's only held on by a couple steps. And the factory crescent is really just kind of like a strip of about five or six LEDs uh, that's plugged into the factory harness. Just unplug that. And then what you're going to want to do is grab the lighting trends 
crescent and it's basically in the exact same shape. So what you're going to want to do is just put that crescent strip exactly in the exact same spot where the OE one was. And if you do it correctly, then all the LED lights will line up and shine into the crescent and illuminate your crescent. Really easy. Just put the old one or put the new one in where the old one came out. Now, I didn't even realize this when I did the driver's side uh, headlight, but these uh, Lighting Trends Crescents, they actually come with adhesive on there, so it's, it looks like kind of 3M backing. If you peel the, pat, the backing, it'll stick in place, but I haven't had any issues like not using the adhesive, um, so, you know, do it however you want. So that's it y'all, like the crazy hard part is pretty much done. Now you can start, you know, putting things back together. Um, just making sure that your wires, your wires for the aftermarket uh, DRL boards are all kind of situated together so they can run out the back of the headlight. All right, this step is totally optional. You know, use the chapters and jump ahead if you don't care about it. But whenever I got the headlights out of the car, I always like to uh, refinish the surface of the headlights. Um, it usually gets rid of all the rock chips and any scratches that I might've got on there and have a nice clean surface, you know, for uh, clearing. What that entails is basically just wet sanding it. So you start with a thousand grit and you get it like nice and hazed up, get all the clear coat off of the surface of the lens, and then you increase your grit. You get some 2000, smooth it out, get it nice and hazy, 3000, smooth it out, get it nice and hazy, and you just hit it with a polisher and your surface is like glass. Um, so I do this every time it's outside of the car, just so I'm not, you know, accidentally messing up uh, any of my paintwork. 